all things SMS less gross. So we started with SMS and we're, we're laser focused on SMS because it's the biggest gap in the market today. It's hard and it's expensive to acquire phone numbers and there's just hasn't been a ton of innovation um, outside of website pop-ups for capturing SMS. Like 95% of people that they had in their study, they say that they are subscribed to less than seven brands on SMS. Automation of messages was a fantastic way to build owned channels that would allow anyone that wanted to sell stuff to their audience mm -hmm. the ability to convert Instagram following into an owned channel. Hello, hello everyone, and welcome back to Email Einstein, the podcast by Floium. We are your host, Vera Sadlak. I'm Andrei Bochu. And we are pumped to have you guys back with us because today we have a very special guest with us today to discuss all things SMS less gross. So today we have a special guest joining us, Jesse Clemens, co-founder and CEO of High Tide. High Tide is the app that is revolutionizing the game for e-commerce brands with their innovative approach to SMS less growth through social DM automations. And we're definitely going to go in details and we're going to discuss this um, amazing tech and details. But before we go there, say hi, Jesse. We're so happy to have you on this podcast today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate uh, the chance to join and talk SMS. Yeah, we just had a quick chat before start heading a record, but Jess is calling us from New York and I'm also in New York and we have what, three inches of snow and the city which never sleeps stops when it snows. <laughs> yes, and, and uh, I have my warm cup of coffee. I'm bundled up inside looking at the snow globe outside and uh, ready to talk SMS as one does on a snow day. Oh, cool, that's cool. perfect. We have a I'm like quick, so uh, jealous of you guys. Oh, sorry, Andre. I'm, I'm just, I just wanted to add a few things about on this like snow th topic. I'm like so jealous of you like experiencing this right now. I actually got myself tickets to Finland in hope of like seeing snow this year for the first time. So hopefully I'm going to be able to see this snow this year. But uh, if not, I'm just going to watch Andre's Insta stories. <laughs> nice, yeah. nice. Amazing. I hope you have a fantastic Finland trip. Are you going cross country skiing by any chance? No, I'm just going for a weekend to see the snow and going back because <laughs> everything perfect. is so like close here in there Europe. You yeah. There you go. I'm jealous. Cool. Yeah, nice, nice. Uh, before we start the full blown interview, we have a quick Q and A questions to to know you better. Are you good with that? Yeah, let's do it. Sure. So let's do it. Facebook or Instagram? Oh, uh, so, all right. So we're doing rapid fire. Choose one. Yeah. I'm going to go with uh -huh. Instagram. Uh, the okay. best platform Perfect. for SMS list growth, of course. <laughs> Desktop shopping or mobile shopping? You know, I am, I'm the guy that the attribution people hate. I browse on mobile and then I go and purchase on desktop. Wow. Uh, okay. So this is question, uh, not this or that favorite app subscription. Ooh, my favorite app subscription. I'm currently addicted to whoop, which is my, uh, oh, wearable, okay. um, not for fitness so much, but for sleep. I love it for uh, sleep tracking. So that's my current and funny enough, if the whoop team is listening, my, re my renewal is up in a couple of days here, my yearly subscription renewal. And, uh, I'm hoping to, uh, hoping to renew. So that's my current fave. <laughs> nice. If you could learn any new skill, what would it be? That's a good one. I would love to be amazing at playing the drums, which drums. I am not amazing at and have always admired. <laughs> Cool. What's something on your bucket list? What do you have something that you can share? Ooh, on my bucket list for life in general? Mm -hmm. Yes. This is, a, this is kind of an easy one. It's, it's uh, hopefully going to be quite achievable. It's not about vacations or crazy professional accomplishments, but I am uh, hoping to start a family at some, some point soon. So that's about my bucket list is to become a dad. That's so cool. Great one. Yeah. I never heard that on bucket list, but it's cool. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one. Mine is more hard to mine is harder to achieve. I talked about it many times on the podcast, but I really, really, really want to hug a penguin and I still haven't found a way of like doing that. So if oh you have any God. connections uh, in the industry, well, I don't know what like, the, the, the penguin know. population looks like in Finland, so I can't promise you, but uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll take a look. Did you ever read the book 
uh, Mr. Popper's Penguins as a kid or see the movie? No, I haven't. I grew up uh, in Ukraine and we read like different kind of books, but I'm going gonna, I'm I'm gonna to put so this think, one on my bucket list, Jesse. I'm going to send you a link, not to divert okay. too much, but the 10 second is it's about a guy that wants to own penguins in the city. And so he freezes oh his apartment and brings all the penguins into the apartment. I, have you ever, I think you saw this is a famous comedian. Who, who's his name? What is the actor name? Oh, I don't know. I only know it as a children's book. No, Andre. I would, I would remember if I saw something as legendary as this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think there's a similar movie. Maybe it's based on the, the story, but like more modern one. And the famous comedian, I forgot his name. He, he plays, uh, who plays dumb, Dumber and Dumber. And there's a movie about also oh, he Jim receives Carrey? a package. Yeah, Jim Carrey. Oh, and Jim he Carrey. The penguin yeah, yeah. In New York City. Are and he frees his of, apartment. Like, that okay, must no, be the no. that must be the movie version. Okay, cool. Um, I'm gonna Google it after the after the call. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, uh, Andre, well, what's your bucket list? Mine. Uh, <laughs> we gotta know. I mean, the people want to know. Always like to share. It's I want to build the Earthship. Um, it's it's Earthship, not spaceship. Earthship. It's a a sustainable building based of, ba built from garbage, and they typically build them in Arizona. It's a guy, I forgot his name, but he, he has even a documentary on Netflix, how he built, how he reused like bottles, tires, and build those sustainable houses in, in ground. So I want to build one in, in my life. Your Incredible. bucket list items are so admirable, you guys. <laughs> <I'm> gonna... <laughs> well, I was going to say, when, when you get that built, uh, I'll bring the kids and Vera brings the penguins and we'll have a little party. Yeah. So crossed, I just yeah. Google it. So the movie calls Mr. Pop Poppers Penguins. That's it. That's it. Yeah, okay. 2011. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Google it after it, the call. It's a very funny movie. Guess what I'm watching tonight. <laughs> 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 awesome. Well, we do have some more serious questions, Jesse. I promise this episode is not going to be only about the penguins and stuff. Uh, but uh, tell us more about what you do, what is high, high tide, and how does it connect to Instagram? Because I'm like still very like in awe of what you guys are doing and tell us more about it. Yeah. And yeah. how did, did you come up with this name, High Tide? Yeah. High oh, tide. Great. That's, that's another one. great question. So uh, <laughs> let me... Let me briefly start with kind of the discovery of, um, you know, of, of, of learning about this method and, wh and why we wanted to build this platform. And then I'll get into the specifics of how it works. On a top level, uh, I had spent my, my career before, um, before getting to the Shopify space about a year and a half ago, I'd spent my career in social and specifically on social ads, uh, spent almost 10 years uh, between Google and Facebook and a couple other programmatic ads platforms. And as I got into the Shopify space and learned more about how brands are marketing their products, I realized that there was a major gap uh, that existed between um, brands, uh, social followings, and their owned channels, email and SMS, where you know, many of the Shopify brands that we all work with you know, work so hard to build these non-owned followings on social and then often separately are working to build these owned channels that they have true control over. I thought that problem was really interesting and I kind of filed it away in my head and separately was working on a, you know, now kind of now defunct project that was uh, helping creators to uh, monetize their Instagram messages. When we first you know, started building this concept, Meta had opened up their Instagram messenger API for the first time. My co-founders and I thought it would be cool to build a power inbox for influencers and creators that sorted through incoming comments and DMs. And long story short, we found out that what some of these creators, specifically those who are selling stuff on Shopify, actually wanted was a more dependable way to reach their following. And you know, through a series of experiments, we we um, you know realized that automation of messages was a fantastic way to build owned channels that would allow anyone that wanted to sell stuff to their audience mm -hmm. the ability to convert uh, Instagram following into an owned channel. And um, you know, as we learn more about SMS, we realized that you know SMS opt-ins by nature of both regulatory and kind of consumer habits 
are just mm-hmm. tough to get. Uh, it's expensive oh, yeah. to acquire a phone number. We put two and two together and launched this brand new platform called High Tide about a year ago that helps helps brands acquire phone numbers. And we do that on top of the messenger marketing API, which I can talk a little bit more about in a bit. That's very interesting, Jesse. And uh, just like curious, can you do same thing with like emails or like a similar thing with emails? Yeah. So we started with SMS and we're, we're laser focused on SMS because it's the biggest gap in the market today. It's hard and it's expensive to acquire phone numbers. And there's just hasn't been a ton of innovation um, outside of website pop-ups for capturing SMS. The core function of what we do is, you know, helping brands to start automated short sequences via Instagram DMs that capture uh, capture data. So if you you know remove the SMS part of our platform, what we kind of really aspire to do is be this zero party data collection platform where SMS opt-ins are just one kind of channel that we can move people into. And email is another. Uh, we don't have a full set of email functionality built out in the platform today, but it's high on our list for stuff to do in the future. And if you imagine a DM-based conversation between a brand and a consumer, you know, you might give people the option to what they want to subscribe to or connect, mm-hmm. you know, people with, uh, you know, with whichever channel they prefer. So the, sh- the, the shorter answer is not yet, but we hope too soon. Well, Jesse, so could you please walk us through the process from A to Z in terms of um, how, how, the, how do you convert Instagram followers into SMS subscribers? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so a brand onboards onto the High Tide platform and they connect us with uh, three important platforms that they use. The first is their SMS platform, like Attentive or Postscript or Clavio. Mm-hmm. The second is their Instagram account. Uh, They connect their Instagram account via this messaging API that Facebook provides that makes it safe um, and in fact encouraged to run these types of automations. And the third is the Shopify connection, which we'll talk about in a bit. Once Mm -hmm. they're connected, a brand can set up uh, what we call a keyword-based trigger. Um, That keyword-based trigger is monitoring posts and direct messages looking only for very specific things to to trigger off of, whether those are certain emojis or certain comments. And when triggered, it uh, results in a short direct message uh, automation that takes the user through a sequence of of questions. From a user perspective, like putting aside all the kind of like API stuff and the technical aspects of it, on the front end as a user, I might be browsing my favorite, you know, say my favorite sneaker brand, I mm-hmm. see a post about a product. Let's imagine that it's a post about, you know, a limited run of a hundred of a certain colorway of sneakers that are going to be available in two weeks from this sneaker brand that I love. Mm-hmm. On the post, there'll be some sort of call to action. It might be, you know, comment, drop to get signed up for our uh, text alert when the product is available. When I engage with that post via a comment, or it could be via a story reply or a direct message, High Tide is picking up that automation and taking me through a private message that comes from the brand in the brand's voice that basically mm-hmm. says like, hey, Jesse, you know, thanks for your interest in this drop. We expect these products to go quickly. If you want to sign up for the list, uh, reply back with your phone number. And from there, I'm taken through a short TCPA compliant flow. Most importantly, High Tide's job stops uh, at the moment of opt-in. So we're moving people into the opt-in uh, for the platform. And then we do measurement and analytics afterwards to show how, you know, you know, what kind of ROI the, the brand has gotten from a campaign like this, but we're actually mm-hmm. partnered with all the SMS platforms. So we don't send any texts. We simply help these platforms and these brands grow their lists faster. And from a consumer standpoint, it's kind of a magic moment because I've opted in for something that I want to get a notification about in the future. Two weeks later, I get the text, you know, I'm walking to the store, I get the text and I'm, you know, able to buy the thing that I wanted to buy at the moment I want to buy it. Yeah, that's very interesting. And you you mentioned that you guys call yourself like a zero party uh, data platform. Like what other kind of information can you collect? Say, is there a way to collect information about sneakers color preference and like recorded somewhere on the platform, say in Clavio or some like other 
like preferences. Is there, is that a thing that you can do? Yes. So the beauty of the platform is that um, regardless of whether someone is a new subscriber or not, when they interact with a post and either input their phone number or have input their phone number in the past, with their consent, we can update the marketing automation platform's record of that mm. uh, customer profile. So just, you know, picking randomly from one of our many great partners for PostScript, if you're going through that flow, we can ask you, you know, what size shoe are you uh, in the case of the snooper sneaker drop? And PostScript has a beautiful set of APIs that they've made uh, available to their developer partners that allows us to, you know, uh, not only mark that person as subscribed, but actually update them to match a particular segment or profile. And um, I'm really excited about this over the long term. One kind of, you know, major trend we've heard from the uh, marketing automation platforms is, you know, this is the year that um, they're figuring out how to bring AI to bear around, you know, no more batch and blast tech sending. It's all about personalization. Um, they're best suited to do that job because they're storing all these customer records and interactions. And if I can, you know, alongside a brand better fuel that uh, fuel that machine and help make text right. more effective. I'm really happy. So the, uh, you know, the, the idea of a of preference data as one type of zero party data is really interesting and really important. Yeah, that's, that's huge. Zero party data is huge. Definitely. Jesse, maybe it's a silly question, but I'm sure a lot of people will have it. How is it legal? Like, seriously, how do you guys ensure that a Sevastopol process remains like compliant? Because there are like so many requirements that TCPA uh, have. Like one of them is to have the consent and written or electronic signature of like the person who's who's agreeing to receive SMS. Like, how does High Tide ensure that the SMS opt-in process remains like compliant? Yeah, that's that's a really really important question. So the way that the the way that we respect uh, TCPA and uh, allow brands to uh, adhere to TCPA is by including extremely direct, clear, and TCPA compliant messaging in the direct message itself. So as a user, if I'm you know joining a um, you know, joining a, a campaign by kicking off a direct message with a brand and the brand is asking for my phone number, that's all good and fine. But the moment, you know, the moment before I'm opting in to a text list, I have to be presented with extremely clear language that covers all the TCPA requirements, including, you know, um, language around that I'm signing up for recurring marketing messages that consent is in the condition to purchase and, um, you know, that, that I'm, you know, signing up for a text list and, um, the, the SMS platforms themselves have done a fantastic job of ensuring that when brands are launching new opt-in flows, whether that's an on-site pop-up or whether that's a, you know, Instagram story post that they're including all the right language. And so what mm -hmm. high tide does is we actually sync up with the existing uh, TCPA language on an account level. So for a given brand uh, with our integration, we pull back the TCPA consent language and we just replicate it and, you know, in a way that's clear and easy to read in the direct message. And then finally, the actual moment of consent happens uh, through whatever join method uh, the platform you know, uses. This is getting a little technical, mm -hmm. but one example is you know, many platforms support the ability for a consumer to send in a keyword to join a text list. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah. if you're doing SMS, you're probably familiar with this experience. And so when the SMS platform receives that keyword, uh, consent is logged and, you know, you're good to go. And then from there, it's, you know, providing the ability to opt out, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we make sure that we're uh, simply sending the user along to the platform's existing join flow and keeping mm -hmm. everything super TCPA compliant and clear. Want to discover how much money your email marketing can actually bring you? If that's the case, let our team of email marketing experts show you how. With our free email marketing audit, 
will conduct a comprehensive analysis of your email marketing efforts, provide you with an action plan, and show you how to effectively segment and convert your audience. Simply go to flowium.com slash audit and book your audit today. I have one not prepared question, but I have to ask you because it's, it bothers me. <laughs> uh, so there's other players uh, in the industry. And again, they are similar, but maybe they are different. So I want to ask you, since you're in this industry, like provider, like vendor, like ManyChat, are they a competitor of yours or not? Or they do something different? Because it sounds very similar, but... Maybe I'm misunderstanding. Yeah, this is this is an interesting one. So the, the messaging the messaging API that Instagram built has made it really, really easy to integrate. And so, you know, as you would expect, there are many solutions out there that do chat automation or Ooh. that do chatbots or that do, you know, automated replies. Everything from CX platforms like Gorgeous, for example, falls into this category in that they're ingesting messages for customer service down to many chat and you know a few of the others that are more general purpose marketing tools. Um, okay. The difference between High Tide and anyone else out there is that High Tide is laser focused on SMS growth. And um, you know we have uh, spent a lot of time integrating into the uh, existing SMS partners out there as opposed to trying to compete with our own texting service. And so oh. with High Tide, you know, we've we've assembled something in a unique way that provides extreme value to a brand and allows them to get up and running with these types of campaigns faster than anywhere else. Could you go and, you know, put together a series of queries uh, to, you know, your text provider and assemble it in one place and then put together, you know, a third party chat solution and run some of these campaigns? You could with a lot of time and effort. We make it easy to connect in five minutes and get up and running for a very low cost mm -hmm. and, and high value. And that's, uh, you know, that's how we intend to win. Okay. Thank you for ex explanation. So you said that you trigger your automations based on specific keys or keywords, but on Instagram, a lot of people to grow their account, they use some method to, to mention somebody else. Let's say, hey, mention five people to get into this giveaway. So first question, da, do you have any strategy or does it trigger your automations if somebody mentions somebody else and do you message both people or only one? How does that work? Ah, that's a great question. This one actually comes up quite a bit. So we consider tagging as one way to trigger a, an automation. Mm. A popular scenario is, you know, a brand has collaborated with a influencer, for example, you know, has a, a collab post up and running and both, you know, the influencer and the brand are asking for, you know, a friend tag action. In our case, the way that Instagram has built this beautiful API is that you can only run an automation uh, in, in the scenario that we're describing. This is actually a comment private reply from the person that left the comment. Mm -hmm. So while we hope that the person they tagged might you know, come in and join the party and comment on that post, you're only allowed to respond to that person that left the comment. And that's very important, a uh, clear distinction and uh, a clear rule that Instagram has built to avoid... Uh, spam like behavior and uh, you know all the all the unwanted dm type stuff that you could imagine happening without um stricter controls could you walk us through an example let's say if europe did this giveaway and i'm tagging somebody else and i'm receiving messages from vera's brand and what kind of messages I received? Thank you for tagging. And uh, like, can you walk us through some example, please? Yeah, for sure. Okay. So I'm going to use a example of a brand that uh, we actually have a case study of on our website. Check it out if you want uh, even more detail. Let me start very briefly with describing the objective of this campaign. And then I'll describe the actual mechanics of how the messages worked. Um, so we work with a brand called Super Bonsai. Uh, Super Bonsai is a new uh, entry to the market. It's a um, very fast growing hydration solution. So in simpler terms, it's a, it's a, it's a hangover cure, you, you know, mm -hmm. uh, or a, a supplement that helps with hangovers. You know, you drink it the night 
you know, you're, you're out for a bunch of drinks or the next morning, uh, and they are, you know, growing this, this brand very fast. They were launching, uh, in a new channel They're on Shopify, they were launching their Amazon store and they were at the same time launching their SMS program. So they, they happened to have chosen PostScript for their SMS platform. And they came to us and they were like, Hey, we want to do, um, this giveaway. And the objective, our objective is to get as many new SMS subscribers as possible for the lowest possible, uh, cost. And we want to do it around the Amazon giveaway. So we want to like kind of pair it with this, you know, this Amazon launch and do a giveaway around it. In their case, you can imagine a post. The post was about, uh, an, I believe it was an Amazon gift certificate, um, plus some, you know, free product. And the post had a very clear caption that said, Hey, here's what we're giving away and here's how to enter. Yes, this is it. Uh, for anyone watching the video that it's up on the screen now, the case study in the caption, the caption had one of the requirements of the giveaway as tag a friend to enter the campaign. Um, when, uh, or actually let me be clear. It said tag a friend, um, and we'll DM you to finalize your entry to the campaign. Mm -hmm. And uh, in their case, when someone entered the giveaway, tagged a friend, uh, they expected to receive a DM. And sure enough, seconds later, they received a DM that said, you know, hey, here's the last step for, for joining this giveaway. What's your phone number for joining our text list? And um, included all the TCPA language. And then that was kind of the last step for entering this giveaway. Um, so those are the mechanics. The results were, um, they actually did a collab on this one that reached 60 times their, their follower count. So it was super high engagement. Wow. It was kind of a carefully selected collaboration that was within their kind of brand world. And I believe it was like 20, I think it was 24 cents per subscriber uh, was the cost for net new subscribers, which if you think about a percentage yeah. uh, discount, that's really great. And then, you know, they're, they're tracking some uh, conversion stats down the line. So they're super happy with this one. It jump started their postscript list in a way that the, um, you know, day, day by day drip of people joining a pop-up just can't compete with. And um, they maintained a, a pretty high opt-in rate for this one, which is, which is also important. Yeah. Cool. So just like to confirm, Jesse, so say I tagged Andre, Andre will receive like a, some sort of uh, message from you as well, no, right? Or from no. the No, so no. only no. the person okay. that leaves the initial comment gets a message. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, see. Yeah. Hopefully you will have received a notification from Andre. Oh, Andre tagged in this post. You'll check it out. Right, if you're right, interested, right. you might join. But otherwise, it's mm. one comment results in one message. Yeah, makes sense. I just wanted to add the other cool thing about this campaign. I mentioned it quickly in, in passing, but this is an important um, part of the strategy. The way that Instagram has built collab posts, if you're collabing with either another brand or a mm -hmm. influencer, you know, I think people are probably familiar with the collab post, but briefly right. it shows up in both feeds. And so if you're the primary post, you actually have control over the comments and you can run an automation like this so that if people are coming from another audience, even if they joined that post through, you know, the influencers feed, for example, we can uh, capture phone numbers at a very high rate, uh, which is an added bonus of this, of this uh, strategy for this particular client. And I recently just find out, maybe it's not recent news, but I, I recently found out that you are able to collaborate with multiple uh, brands. Yes. In the past, you just were able to do it only one. That's right. But now you're multiple people, multiple brands. That's not right. Sure, not sure what the limit is, but it's... It at, will... one point, at one point, it was six. Uh, wow. I haven't seen people do too many more than six. I think in, in, in practice now, they may have opened it up further. But it's a really cool feature. Actually, I think it's one of the the um, top underrated features on social right now. Yeah, I wonder what what the LTV of those people who are coming like organically versus people who are coming through this like giveaway type of posts are. Maybe you guys have some like insights. I'm just like curious whether or not it makes sense even like to invest in those giveaways. Yeah, that's a great question. So this is one of the things we were kind of unsure of at the beginning because we we're like, hey, we have this. We have this tactic that we know works really well for SMS list growth, but does it, you know, does it convert? And obviously we have, you know, um, I think we have now close to like 12 different campaign types where giveaways are one campaign type, but in the early days, most of the campaigns were giveaways. It's now, you know, balanced out a bit more. And um, one of the things that was extremely important to us when we we're building this platform 
and the V1 of it, like the, you know, the dirty, v, the dirty MVP version of this thing was <laughs> how do we track ROI on these these campaigns. Mm -hmm. Brands are running giveaways all the time, not just with High Tide, obviously. You know, objective for many of those campaigns, they're often run by the social teams where the objective is gain more followers. And, um, you know, it's a successful tactic for gaining more followers and getting engagement up on the account overall. But there's this constant question of like, all right, what's my ROI? And are those people that are following mm -hmm. from these campaigns, are they actually, you know, um, worthwhile additions to my audience? Where on social, you know, follower count is follower count. And uh, there's no right. added cost per se, if you're adding a bunch of low intent people. On SMS, it's actually the opposite. The, you know, the more mm -hmm. low intent people you get on the text list, the more churn you're going to get. And also, you know, you might just be sending expensive text messages to people that don't care about your brand and don't want to buy anything. Right. All right. So the way that we solved this was importantly, we integrate into Shopify and then for each campaign, say it's a giveaway for the, for the giveaway campaign, we map purchases in Shopify to the phone number that's been collected in order to show down to the cent, how many purchases are coming out of that audience that's been collected. Mm -hmm. And that's how we how we oh. measure ROI for the brand and what we found, which was like surprising and and you know a happy a happy outcome for us in the very beginning was these giveaways do actually uh, perform in terms of ROI sometimes very substantially. You have a lot mm -hmm. of people that are already you know um, huge fans of the brand on Instagram, and for whatever reason they haven't had the incentive, they haven't gotten the pop up, they haven't gone over to the website lately, or maybe they even churned off of the text list. And so um, posts like this are a really great way that is now fully ROI measurable to get those people mm -hmm. back on the text list. Yeah, interesting. Um, guys, I just want to share like a few really, really interesting uh, stats that I got from like one of this Clavio uh, studies that they've done recently. I actually found out that like 95% of people that they had in their study, they say that they are subscribed to less than seven brands on SMS. That's Amazing. like such a big commitment, right? Like when you're getting someone's email, it's probably not as big of a deal as it is when you're getting an SMS. And like, I, I am subscribed to like three or four brands. So that's like getting that SMS um, is that's huge. That's a great stat. But that's... Like to me, I honestly, I expected this number to be higher, but then I like analyzed like what brands I'm subscribed to. And it's just like maybe five brands. Yeah, um, that's true. But, but yeah, what guys, what brands are you following on like SMS? Oh man. So I, um, first, firstly, I'm subscribed to many more than seven by nature of, right. um, <laughs> I subscribe for research and subscribe to follow the brands that we work with. So, you know, right. everyone from from Seek to a great underwear brand called Nads to, you know, Super Bonsai, I'm getting texts all the time. And it's actually, you know, pretty fun uh, way to stay on top of what my brands are doing. From a personal standpoint, I am uh, subscribed to a, a great service called Bottomless that sends me coffee on a regular basis. And um, they do an amazing job of SMS marketing, both from a transactional standpoint, but also you know, kind of sharing about the brands that are the coffee mm -hmm. brands that are launching on their platform. So that's one that I love. Yeah, that's nice. So you are an experienced SMS user, I guess. So from your, like, from your standpoint, maybe more as a user and not as an owner of this platform, how can brands ensure that they maintain that like momentum from their successful SMS list growth campaigns and maximize the like potential of this like new acquired contacts. Um, do you have any like recommendation? Are there any like specific strategies or tactics that you can recommend? Yeah. So there's a, obviously a, like a huge body of work around effectively using an SMS list in general. So I won't, I won't really mm -hmm. touch on any of that stuff. That's, you know, uh, you guys could probably teach me a lot about that. Um, what I do know about is, you know, for some of these social campaigns, um, effective segmentation is really, really important. And then, you know, being aware of where that person is landing in your in your existing flows or existing setups. So what I mean by that is, you know, typically a brand will come to us. They have a they have two objectives. Number one, they have something, you know, that they're dropping soon, a new product that's releasing. Maybe mm -hmm. they have, um, you know, a new fashion capsule, whatever that whatever it is, there's something going on that they want to 
um, run a campaign around because that tends to work really well for social and does a great job of pulling in high intent people. Making sure that you're both segmenting the users that have interacted with the campaign on a very granular level and Mm -hmm. also getting those people into the proper welcome flows if they're new subscribers and like telling the difference between a new subscriber versus someone else that has that has has uh, joined in the past or that is an existing subscriber. These are all fairly simple settings in, mm-hmm. in the customer automation platform, but just being thoughtful about what message you want to send to, to who is the you know, whole name of the game. And it's just as important for this channel as for an on, uh, you know, the overall program. Or even more important, I got this like, again, going back to my stats, I love good stats. Going back to this uh, study by Clavio, um, they actually asked people, what are the main reasons consumers unsubscribe from SMS program? And okay, let's let's play a game. What do you guys think is the number reason, number one reason why people unsubscribe from um, SMS programs? I'm going to say SMS. too many, many, many yes. texts. <laughs> too many texts. Like 73% of like responders said that, that uh, yeah, too many SMSs is like number one reason why they would unsubscribe. Also, people said that the same message many times is like a big mm. reason to unsubscribe or messages that don't have a purpose. To be honest, yeah. I don't necessarily understand what it what it means. Like probably like messages without clear but come CTA. On, Hulk. How, how, how much purpose can you put in those 166 uh, characters? But I mean, you can, Andrew. You just have to be very, like, purposefully using uh, the CTAs, right? Where you're sending traffic, good, clear call to action. Yeah. Like, I've noticed that, like, I mean, brands that I work with, every time we send the link to, like, a blog post or something, these SMSs are not performing as well as, say, mm promotional SMS with like link to the yeah. product directly. But that's yeah. just like my experience. Maybe I, I, guys... think that, I think that, you know, this is, you know, getting a little further into general SMS um, mm-hmm. best practice world that I said I wasn't going to comment on. But I think like, you know, it's about value exchange. You actually, that text right. has to be valuable in some way, whether that's just timely or whether it's actually like, you know, thoughtful um, content. Um, for example, right. for this coffee company that I was talking about, this is not what they're doing. This is a, an, a, an imaginary uh, example. I would mm-hmm. much rather, you know, know which two coffees are, you know, coming up and like, I don't know, maybe a line or two about what makes them special. Maybe like, mm-hmm. what region did they come from? Who's the farmer that produced them? That sort of thing. As opposed to what I don't want is I don't want a coffee joke of the day hitting my inbox at 730 <laughs> when I'm preparing for my morning meeting because like, you know, maybe that's fun the first time, but uh, it's going to get old quickly. But I, I think if I ask the same question, you and Vera, Vera probably will prefer coffee joke every hey. morning. <laughs> yes, that's, it. that's, that's a good that, point. That's, that's what I was point. about to say. <laughs> yeah, it all comes down to segments. like understanding who your audience is, I guess, right? Yeah. Always, I, I, always. I, I wonder how, um, you know, uh, one one area I'd like to learn a lot more about is email. How does all this stuff compare to email? Is it, um, you know, kind of the same general principles or is there anything dramatically different when it comes to retention for opt-ins and subscribes? Uh, in comparison to what, SMS? Yeah. SMS, yeah. Vera, go ahead. Uh, I mean, <laughs> in email, you work with a bigger real estate, right? The email yeah. itself is bigger, so you can definitely be more adventurous Such with a copy. You can be, people are more forgiving with emails, you know? SMS is like more personal almost. Like, I'm very careful with who I give my sms number two with emails oof, i'm like i had like a bad word in my in my head for that but with emails i'm very adventurous i give my email to like everyone <laughs> like seriously yeah. no, it's, it's bad it's like bad every morning i wake up to like 100 unanswered like promotional emails but that's maybe that's a part of the job that's what i want to believe yeah. anyways but i do love a good email so yeah. yeah people are more like forgiving with emails but i yeah. think the same principles apply right the no, uh, right, right timing right per right message to the right person and and stuff like that but even with the emails we do collect zero party data about like your preferences like what do you want mm-hmm. to see in your inbox what you don't want to see maybe you want to put your emails on hold for 30 days maybe you only want to receive like promotional emails from from 
mass. So that's like a big portion of what we are doing. Andre, do you have anything to add? Yeah, the same. To agree with everything you just said, and also with uh, it's so easy to unsubscribe from email. You just type in stop with yeah. emails uh, with it's emails. Oh, sorry, SMS was emails. You there's a preference page. There's like, hey, mm -hmm. why you're unsubscribing? There's like n now they have one click unsubscribe, but still it redirects you to different page with SMS. So you just need to be more careful. Mm -hmm. Okay, and last questions for me in terms of cost efficiencies uh, in comparing. Not sure if you run some kind of test, but collecting phone numbers for sms through high tide versus just organic like somebody visiting the website providing their phone number on the opt-in form have you run any tests and compared the cost yeah so the, there's a couple ways to think about this there's a couple components to the cost uh when you for for a high tide campaign one is the cost of our of our um you know SaaS costs which are you know, range anywhere from, we do have a free plan, but our typical brand is paying anywhere from 150 to like 350 bucks on average. Um, there's some usage-based components built in. And then there's the cost of the campaign, which could be, you know, if you're doing a, if you're promoting a drop, for example, and you're putting up images of the product or teasing the product or whatever, there's zero cost. Uh, if you're doing a giveaway that, you know, cost might be a $300 value of something that as a brand, depending on your margins, it might cost you 30 bucks or 150 bucks, whatever the cost of the product is. We typically compare that to discount oriented opt-in. So the reality mm -hmm. is most brands, vast majority of their phone numbers are captured through uh, discount pop-ups. And okay. um, so if you're looking at an average AOV, let's use a hundred bucks because it's easiest and a 10% pop-up, you know, 10% off somewhere around the 10%, uh, sorry, $10 cost to consumer. So maybe that, maybe that phone number is costing you as a brand five bucks or four bucks or something in that range mm -hmm. by, uh, using engagement, uh, type strategies and campaigns that are, you know, uh, more around products coming, connecting people with intent to buy or waitlisting or early access or VIP club or, you know, whatever, or like a giveaway prize, you can drive those costs dramatically down. And that's, uh, that's one of the most exciting parts about this, uh, you know, this platform. Cool. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Jesse. It was so fun talking SMS you. to you. We love having like a good email and SMS nerds on this podcast. Yeah, I love it. So I love it. Uh, I'm only just... wondering one thing, which is when is the podcast name going to be changed to email and SMS? On this time? <laughs> Actually, no, actually, it's funny that you mentioned it, Jesse. Go yeah. ahead, Andre. Yeah, we are right now. We thinking about to change it in not to be more e email or SMS specific, but more e-commerce and mm -hmm. more cover like more, more brands. Yeah, co cover more brand stories and success stories and things that we can learn from successful brands. Uh, yeah, but amazing. it's uh, still in work. Amazing. Well, yeah. you you both run a fantastic podcast. I've listened to Thank you. a few episodes uh, in the past and look forward to listening more. And it's been an honor to come on and talk about commerce with you guys. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much, Jesse. It was so much fun having you on this podcast. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks again. See talk you next soon. Tuesday. See All you right. next Tuesday, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye. Hey, if you're watching this and you like what you see, please hit subscribe and hit the bell because it helps us grow our channel.